We're here to experience incredible places, and go on journeys, go on adventures. I think I got one here. See new things. That's what the human spirit was built on, is what is out there? How can we go further? How can we see more? How can we experience all there is to experience in life? This is what you live for. Go tenderloin. You know what that means, eh, Trav? It means we got her done. We're in the wilds of the Yukon. I'm Greg McHale. My good buddy Travis Macy is with me on this hunt from Colorado. It's exciting for me because this is the first time that we've ever hunted together. We've spent a pile of time in the mountains, racing, adventure racing, multi-sport, both with on the same team and against each other. So it's been a long time coming to get you up here to hunt. And we're after mountain goats. We're doing it kind of adventure racing style with kayaks on the remote river and we're going to get after it one way or another just like years gone by. I'm just excited for the experience, you know, coming to hunting as an adult within the last few years, I've still got a ton to learn, so the entire process, I'm going to be watching, I'm going to be asking questions and seeing what I can take home to my own hunting. And then I'm also excited that on a hunt like this, we're going to get to use a lot of the skills and techniques and mindsets that we've developed over the years racing and training out in the wild, whether it's paddling or possibly getting up a hill quick sometime if we need to, maybe nighttime navigation, all that stuff comes into place. I can pretty much guarantee that we're gonna have all of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the kind of experience that brings people together, so I'm psyched to get on it. I'm happy to have you here. It's gonna be an adventure no matter what. So Greg, did you get some sleep last night? It's always that anticipation of the hunt starting, right? I slept well, but I know what you're saying about the anticipation. I mean. It's it's like the night before a race or you know yeah. something big at work you're you're thinking about it and the unknowns are running through your head and you know you're ready when you're out you're going through the gear in your mind did I bring everything you know did I leave something at home there's a couple times I woke up in the middle of the night and, it, and it's like you know man when is it gonna be light out because I just want to get going so that's the main feeling just ready to roll <laughs> should we get this going All right. yeah let's do it let's hit the river okay It's such a transition from race is that this is where we have to, you know, slow things down and make sure that we don't go past something without seeing it. Because we're so used to like head down, you know, you're looking up to navigate and then it's head down and it's just charging, right? Just that hard charge all the time. This is not that hard charge. This is hunting and we're just doing it from a kayak. And it's just slow, methodical, pick the place apart. I think I got one here. Is it worth checking out? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's a big white spot and kind of a perfect location. Let's pull over and give it a look. Yeah. If you go right from the top point, yep. if you go straight down, see where the, uh, the, the rock ends? Yep. And there's that very first clump of, of trees there. Yep. Okay, so then just go 45 down from that. It's only like a, like 100 yards. Yep. You got him. Anytime you see something at like a distance like that, you gotta put the scope on it to make sure, and then you're still not gonna be able to tell. All you're gonna be able to tell is that it's a goat. Yep. It's still pretty cool to see. Check it out. It's mountain goat in the Yukon. <laughs> it's pretty cool in my book. We know yeah. there's around. They're here, there's no doubt about that. Daddy's gotta be somewhere. Exactly.
I think it's um, always looking for something new. You know, you, you've done one thing at a, at a very high level and there's a big value in being a beginner again in something. And uh, that for me uh, has become hunting. It's a way to, to reconnect with nature in a much slower, and because of that, I think more intimate way. You know, whether it's the wildlife or the terrain or even in Colorado, you know, I've been a whole bunch of places as a hunter that I never would have had any reason to go for one of my other sports. And my first hunting experience was a couple years ago. I, I went out with a buddy, you know, peak of the rut in Colorado, bulls are bugling. It's like National Geographic. And, you know, we went out there and had a wonderful, intense hunting experience on the first day. And, and it's those kind of moments that pull you in. And I think also to, to me, the idea of um, addressing hunting in a, in a physical way, you know, where, where you're using uh, human-powered avenues to, to get far back into the backcountry, and whether that's around home where I'm just running or mountain biking into a spot or, you know, going a long way back at a place like this. It's a big push. Yeah, I'm about ready to be done paddling for today. I think this is about as good a spot as we're ever going to get on this river to camp right here. You know, it's awesome. We can glass right from here. How nice is that, though? Fresh snow. That's, that storm nailed us with rain and it snowed up high. Exactly. It looks pretty nice. It's clearing up now, though. Maybe tomorrow will be awesome. I think tomorrow's gonna be awesome no matter what. <laughs> yeah. I can set up the tent if you wanna get wood or vice versa, it doesn't matter. I get some water. The best camping tip that I would have wished I had have had when I first started guiding yep. was don't bring jeans. We were literally guiding in blue jeans. Really? And can you imagine? In, in the Yukon. In the Yukon. In the rain. In the rain. In the snow. Okay. Blue jeans. How did that feel? Well, compared to now, I was like, like, who ever suggested that jeans was a good idea? Home sweet home. Did I tell you why I have this mustache? Is that what you call that? <laughs> it's a mustache, Greg. So Wyatt and I, my son, he's seven, we made a deal that uh, neither of us are shaving our mustache until we harvest a big game animal this year. That would have been probably a better deal for me to make Wyatt that one. <laughs> because at Christmas time, you're gonna have a beard like this. <laughs> I got a bunch of tags. Got the Colorado elk tag. As, as soon as I get back, they're gonna be high rut. Man, I'll be out there with my bow. Awesome. Bugle on in. Awesome. Just like that. Isn't there like 250,000 elk in Colorado? 277,000. Yeah. Like, oh, there's also 260,000 hunters. How hard can it be? Greg, that's about the coldest night of camping in September I can remember. <laughs> well, certainly even for the first week of September, right? I think it was probably last night was minus four, minus five Celsius. I had one of those moments this morning when you get out of the sleeping bag, you're still relatively warm and you're kind of weighing in your mind if it's going to be worth it to crawl out of the tent and go hunting or if you should just stay in the tent. <laughs> For me, the, my takeaway on, on those is when you're suffering or going through something a little hard, you gotta shift your thinking from what you're doing to why you're doing it. And if, if you forget about that what and focus in on the motivation, that's what got me out. It's nice to get back in the boat and get some heat generated after last night. Yeah, I tell you what, I am still chilled from last night. And <laughs> I'm ready to paddle hard to warm up. All right, let's do that.
Looking at the map, Trav, it looks like we got about another six miles, 10K or so, to get to, you know, to good goat country. That's kind of where my idea is to, to start to hike up into. We're getting there.